India is the one of the uh, fastest growing uh, groundwater users uh, all over the world. And uh, if you are familiar, those who are familiar with the water scenario, uh, the uh, approximately 66% of the water, uh, groundwater, is used by the irrigation and almost 80% are used by the domestic purpose. Approximately 20 to 25 million users are there in India for groundwater. Have a look at the figures like Delhi 170%, Punjab 145%, Rajasthan 125% and Gurgaon which is just nearby around 311%. What does this mean? It means, for example, in case of Gurgaon, what is getting into the system, we are taking out three times the, that, you know, what is available to the system. Clearly, this is not going to be sustainable. Now, it's simple like, you know, our bank balance, you know, it's, we can only spend uh, an amount which we act, actually are able to deposit. Groundwater, unlike surface water, is an invisible resource. And, uh, you know, you can see a tank or you can see surface water depleting, but you're not really sure of you know the quantity and the quality of groundwater so this is a very very critical factor so measuring validating quality quantity of underground water is is difficult and that is also one reason why uh, you know we find it difficult to mobilize people uh, you know towards recharging groundwater the key difference here that we see is that particularly when we talk in terms of uh, groundwater is that there is a non-renewable component and then there is a renewable component. So, there is a part of the water which is the fossil water, which effectively is like mining, like oil, like anything else that we are pulling out. And that needs to be treated exactly like a non-renewable resource. The moment you get rid of that, so okay, this is a part which should not fall under the overall rubric of water management, then what we have is basically a renewable resource. The basic, basic issue is the water quality that we are able to come across and meet with in our aquifers generally happens to be a fresh water, but say in, a, uh, in sick lands, in a soil which requires remediation, we are finding that the water quality is deteriorating day by day, essentially because of the overdraws, because of the capillary action of the summer heats, and also because of the fact that we are unable to recharge at the appropriate time because the rainwater or rainfall gets reduced. So there is a lot of, say, concern about groundwater. Artificial discharge, we have central groundwater board has prepared a plan for our master plan for artificial discharge. We have demarcated the area. These areas are feasible for artificial discharge. These structures are feasible for artificial uh, recharge. But if you go for artificial recharge without understanding the aquifer and water table, then what can happen? Take an example, Patna town is a town of about 27 lakhs population, They're entirely dependent on groundwater, but there are two aquifers, very rich aquifer, getting recharged from Swan, getting recharged from Ganga, but the aquifers are different. There is a shallow aquifer, there is a deeper aquifer. Now the entire water is being drawn from the deeper aquifer by Patna water board. It's a huge, 150 million cubic meter per year. They are drawing water. Now what is happening, there are two water levels because there are two aquifers. So the water level of the deeper aquifer is going down, water level of the upper aquifer is stagnant. There is no lowering of upper uh, aquifer water level. Now, say, if you take a recharge plan, say, without understanding the aquifer, if there is a dicta that you go all out for artificial recharge, you make a pit and whatever roof water you recharge, what will happen? There will be water logging because the water is not going into the second aquifer, which is starving for water. So, that's the uh, bit of understanding we must be, there must be there in when you are go for groundwater development and management. We are pretending, I'm saying pretending, as scientists, as politicians, that the availability of groundwater in India will simply not change. This is foolishness. This is not true. There will be rules coming, either from the environment or from something else. There may be pollution, like already said, like in Bangladesh, anything else, which will change the availability. And we have no scenarios, no calculations, what would happen, for example, with the Indian food water security when the groundwater reliance will go down by 10%. We have a scenarios, which are modest scenarios, that by 2050, 20, 20, uh, 
the Indian population, you know that, may be at around 1.5 billion, 300 million people more, which means uh, about 25% uh, more food supplied by the irrigated agriculture in Ganga's Basin. And we are closing our eyes and pretending that there is a groundwater available for the next 30 years as it is now. Let me, let me make a call to the Indian government, to the international donors, to launch a huge offensive in Indian context, which will be comparable to the energy challenge of the large upscaling of the groundwater resources integrated management.